Happy World Tourism Day, everybody. It's good to be able to celebrate it. We're normally too busy. We're busy, but we made it a priority, particularly given it was uh, uh, digital transformation as the theme this year. It really um, made us get excited about it. So it's good. It's good. A uh, few more people joining, but we might kick off. Uh, so thanks very much for joining us. Has anyone done anything else today to celebrate World Tourism Day? Had any uh, breakfasts or lunches or anything in your region? No, I've been out for lunch and I've got a function tonight to go to as well. Um, so I think it's a great day to reflect on being part of the industry. Um, it's a, you know, I've, I've been working in the tourism industry now for uh, 25 odd years, I think. And uh, when I first walked in to um, what was Queensland Tourist and Travel Corporation at the time, 25 years ago, and everyone was so friendly, I thought, this is a much better industry. I'd come out of mining and I thought, I'm going to stay in this industry. And that was really, it's, it's been the, um, the nature of the people largely that has kept me involved. It's a, it's a great industry to be in. And I think when the um, World Tourism Organisation celebrates or gets the world to celebrate World Tourism Day, it's them saying this is a really important industry for destinations, but, you know, economies all across the world, regional economies, developing countries, etc., because it has such broad reaching impact and it just keeps growing. So fabulous um, potential to improve the lives of people everywhere. So a few more people joining us. Welcome if you're listening on Facebook. I'm Liz, one of the co-founders of Tourism Tribe. I'm joined by Fabi, my business partner, Fabian Wintel there up on, in North Queensland. And I'm sitting in Brisbane, Queensland. We've got people from all over Australia. And I think somebody uh, had registered from Uganda as well, which is exciting. And what we wanted to do this afternoon was to discuss digital transformation, given it is the theme of World Tourism Day. Um, what is it, you know, let's, let's kind of toss it around and see what does it mean? What's the benefit and application for businesses and regions? And what are the trends that are happening? You know, how can you open your mind to that and take advantage of that for your business or your destination. And I thought I might just start by asking people if they have a view on what digital transformation is. What do, what do, what do they, what comes to mind when you think about digital transformation? And we're happy to turn people's microphones on. If anyone would like to speak, we can turn your microphone on. You don't have to be on camera if you don't want to. Would anyone like to, um, to be on mic and be able to just tell us what they think digital transformation means to them. You can chat that to us, you can pop your hand up if you like, use the controls, use the, um, the menu at the bottom of your screen. I might kick off just in terms of um, what I think it is. Because these terms like digital transformation, digitalization, digitization, even the word innovation, to me, they are really tossed around a lot now, particularly in government circles. There's a lot of government money around for, for digital transformation. It's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a buzz term at the moment. But for me, what does it really mean? For me, it means improving the lives and the processes for your customers and for your staff. So how can you improve what you do by using information, data in, in digital format and technology devices that connect over the internet to improve the processes, make your customers life easier, make, make life better for your staff and do that with a business goal in mind. So, you know, what's the business goal? It's about making your business more profitable for longer. It's about sustainability. Um, we've had some comments thrown into that at, at, um, and that's great, thank you, Barbara. Attractive, functional, findable online, web presence. 
So they're things that are important and spring to mind to Barbara when she thinks about good digital transformation. Anybody else? I'll, I'll add my two cents with a bit of wind in the background. Um, for me, digital transformation is about not only about marketing, but throughout our business. Um, well, here's an example of transform the way we run an educational business. Um, you're all located around the world. You didn't actually have to go into a physical room to meet with us. Um, and Liz and I work remotely from wherever we are, just basically with our phone and our computers. So we've transformed the way we do business in the education slash tourism industry, um, I guess to suit the ever growing need of the customers and of ourselves as well. And I love it being sitting, sitting out here by my very empty dam in Agnes Water. <laughs> That's so it. If we can just broaden the thought of transformation, not just marketing, but you know, business process improvement. I know it doesn't really sound sexy. Um, tools like Zapier, I know I keep mentioning that, but it's automation to make your life really simple. So you can actually probably focus on marketing more and let transformation take into account or run your business for you. I think it's really easy to stay in the same habits of the way that we do things. So for me, what underpins digital transformation is constantly allowing myself to be challenged, and often that's by Fabi, about the um, a more efficient way of doing things, um, a, a better way of doing things and cutting out, always cutting, looking to cut out the middle man or the middle steps in the process. Is there a quicker way to get from A to Z rather than the old way of doing it? And thinking about that for our customers as well. Good, just confirming through the, through the chat there, Torch is mentioning Zapier. We're just going to run a poll just to ask people, just so we can sort of steer the conversation a little bit, um, just get your input. So I don't know, Fab, if you're able to just run that poll. We've got a question for people, if you can answer this question about your digital innovations or changes that you have made. You may have to read through um, what I meant for each one of the sessions. So we're trying to find out from you. Um, just to make sure you're still listening. What type of digital innovation you've implemented over the past 12 months? So that could actually easily be a tourism awards question, isn't it, Liz, over the last 12 months? Um, so for example, did you set up a new digital marketing strategy? Maybe you didn't have one in the past, a new social media strategy or a social media calendar. Did you set up, and you can tick as many as you want, um, did you improve the customer experiences you're using, possibly using virtual real reality goggles? Did you improve the experience you provide your customers on a mobile phone? Because we would see now over 50% of visitors would come to your website on a mobile. Um, did you improve your content? For example, you may have attended our Insta Stories um, tra live training session the other week. And did you start building stories? Or you might have implemented a new booking or reservation system. Um, maybe like some businesses up here in Agnes Water, they finally set up free Wi-Fi for all their guests because of the NBN. Uh, maybe some of you have segmented their email database and using it to communicate better. Or maybe some people in Agnes Water are accepting cryptocurrencies, Agnes Water or Brisbane or any um, region that has been enabled. So grab that poll half of you have voted but I think there's a few people that are logged in twice so I might stop the poll shortly and then I'll actually show you the results because Liz and I can see the results but I don't think you actually can what do you reckon Liz leave it a few more seconds And if you tick the other, it would be fabulous if you could use the chat to let us know what other means. I could actually could really add an extra line for the other. So you'll have to tell us using the chat. 
maybe just started attending online training sessions could be another one. All right, I'll end the poll and we'll have a look. So let's see how you can play. Very interesting. Almost 100% have implemented a new social media strategy. So now it's time to use the chat and let us know what it is exactly that you've done in your social media strategy. You'd be very keen because part of this is actually about sharing experiences and networking with other operators and stop reinventing the wheel. So what you might share might help another operator around Australia or around the world that might be watching us via Facebook. Um, you know, implement something, um, their World Tourism Day 2018 hack that will save them a lot of time. And what strikes me about those responses, Fabi, it's typical that we see when we run digital business training is that most people are focusing on marketing when it comes to digital improvements. They, they think social media, they think but particularly um, mobile websites and content and particularly social media is where a lot of the focus is. Um, and what people are missing, I think, are the opportunities for improved customer experience. So the actual experience when they're with you, not just the experience online and also within their business, so business improvements. Mm. And it's yeah. possibly also because there's not a lot of training around that. Over the years, there's been a lot of training about marketing improvement. Uh, the great thing is these results show that the training is working and maybe now there could be extra training tailored around those business process improvements. Um, but we'd have to find a sexier word, otherwise I don't think many people would sign up. <laughs> a few of you, yeah. I was just going to talk about some of the, the bigger trends mm. um, and that, and you know, and they do cross marketing as well as experience and also sort of back office as well. Um, certainly, you know, we're, you've got, Fabi put that list together and she had um, uh, virtual reality goggles on there for better customer experience using digital. And a lot of small businesses would go, oh, well, I can't really see that applied in, in my business. But that's going to change. That, the, the virtual reality component is going to become a lot more commonplace, I think, across consumer land to use it for looking at anything when you're looking to purchase it. Um, I, saw, I saw really good use of those virtual real reality goggles and you wouldn't have thought about it it's to teach autistic children to cross the road mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you would think that if you're a special education special needs teacher you wouldn't think virtual reality in your, you know in your field and then bang that comes you're like wow of course you know that that could be used so if you think about that and how that could be used in your business, apart from just showing, I guess, drone footage from the destination, um, it could be a really good idea. Karen, well, I, I think about if I think about virtual reality and augmented reality, I think about the um, potential for disabled access or the aging market and access to accommodation and being able to really understand exactly. How um, much of a challenge or not that accommodation will be or whatever that precinct is that they have to move around in you know imagine if they had virtual reality um, to be able to really feel that and understand that properly I can see that as um, as a really wide right wide reaching application for it um, the other one is um, artificial intelligence so that's probably one of the other major trends coming through. And that's, I mean, if we just look at how smart Google has become in terms of giving back really precise results in search um, based on understanding the meaning of what people are asking for, as opposed to just the keywords that they're entering. So you've seen that transition. Everyone's seen that. We've all experienced that as just consumers, let alone business people. 
So that's artificial intelligence and they're building an incredible knowledge base about what people are, are, are doing and, and, and looking for. So our expectations as consumers is that we're going to find what we're looking for. So more and more people are going to expect a more personalised experience. So that is a trend that impacts every business person when they're thinking about their customer is how do you personalise the information you're providing to them about the product and destination and how do you personalise the experience for them. Carol had a good question saying, how do small businesses afford to create virtual reality footage of the experience? Is it something that we can, they can do ourselves? And I'm just thinking because my husband's a commercial drone pilot and, you know, when he goes and, and um, films, for example, the Lark here, which is the pink vessel uh, at 1770, he actually brings his VR helmet that shows the client what, he, what the drone is seeing. Um, and if you think about it, if you've got some, if you've got drone footage of your property or of your region, right, it, there might be some on YouTube. What you could simply do is utilize this when your guests come in or just have it at the breakfast table if you run a B&B &B and just um, put, you know, get them to download it, put their phone in one of these, what is it called, Liz, the Google, not, not Google box, but there's some sort of thing that um, even is made of cardboard yes. and it, it would just be a matter of having a QR code on the breakfast table for them to download and watch it with some really cool, even homemade helmet, or you can even get pick one up for 20 bucks on, on eBay. And that would just make that little point of difference that you could show them what else they could be doing in your region. Instead of watching it just on their phone or on YouTube, they've actually got the 3D feeling of putting the thing on um, and they'll just remember excellent customer service. Um, but it is getting more accessible. So there are a lot more developers who are working with different platforms like the Google Goggles platform to be able to develop. Yeah. So these development platforms are being made available to developers who are taking um, video footage and photos and then bringing them to life. So it's a bit like video wasn't within the realms of all businesses five years ago, you didn't have video on your website. It was very unusual to do that. It was too heavy in terms of um, file size and it was too expensive. Whereas now you can do it yourself. You know, you can do a reasonable video yourself with enough practice. And the price of getting small web size videos shot has come right down. So the same thing will happen with virtual reality. And I, I think, think it, the expectation yeah. of, of the consumers to be able to really get inside the accommodation rooms, really see what the tour offers, thinking yet again about specific markets like the aged market, they're really going to want to know all of the detail. So that's where it will play a role. And then there's obviously augmented reality, which is you think about overlaying a layer. Like if you look at me now um, and you're wondering what these trees are in the background, and you know what that type of grass is, there would be a layer that pops up that will tell you what everything is. So obviously or you go in a city and you hold your phone and you can actually see what the names of the buildings are. Has anyone got cool examples of that? Probably a little bit more difficult to actually implement, um, but there may already be applications in your region. Well, if you want to start digging, it wouldn't probably take you more than three minutes to start finding some cool blogs that you could be following or some great LinkedIn groups. So I think about personalization as a trend. What are you doing in your business with, this, with your customers to really understand those individual people? Where are the points where you can engage with them, but also collect information about them to be able to really get a really clear picture of what it is as individuals they're interested in um, so that you can market specifically to them with only things that they're really interested in. So that is an, that's another trend that's coming through. So we can see digital approaches and technologies blending in some case studies. So for example, a hotel 
that is using, and this is another trend in digital transformation, is the Internet of Things. Have you heard of that? So the Internet of Things is where you've got devices that talk to uh, pieces of infrastructure or the building or uh, so you've got an app say like you know like the google home device and you can control it with an app and you can open your garage door and tell the oven to turn on and set the air conditioners on and that kind of thing um, but you have hotels that you can open your room you know with it with the app you don't need the key you can order room service you can change the lights all that kind of thing um, because that's all driven by an app, that hotel knows the exact footprint of preferences of everything about that person who stayed with them. So they know exactly, it's all, it's all coming into a really well organized data set about that person. So they know that they like to drink a Chardonnay with their dinner and they know that they nearly always order fish and da da da. And yeah, you could trawl through um, their orders, but the fact is that it's all been designed together to be able to start collecting this data. So that allows them then to go on and make their marketing a much more personalised approach and they could serve up a personalised package to that individual if they had all the smarts in place to do that. So that's kind of where the world is going and where every business is going to have to start to think even smaller in terms of those customer preferences. Just even, you know, if you start your, how I put in the example in the poll there, like you finally got your email database segmented, you know, and that's the very start of it. Mm. Um, you could see, you, you could ask a few questions when people check in and then you could just replicate that in your email database. So you've got some type of categories of who, who your customers are and you can send them personalised information. The, even in MailChimp now, which is an email marketing program system, um, I've noticed the other day, it actually told me if you send an email to a specific segment, you get a much bigger response rate and click through rate. So it is huge. That's right. I mean, if, if you're an accommodation provider and you have started to do email marketing, but you're basically sending the one blanket email out to everybody on your data set. That's like a very early stage of email marketing. You need to segment down with their preferences and their profile as, as a target market so that you're only sending family relevant information to families who stay with you. And we've got a lot of information about your customer type and your persona in tourism trip for you to try and break down your target market into further details a bit like you know think about what facebook is doing about you <laughs> yeah well that's right facebook um collects everything they possibly can and so does google i think facebook's been slammed um mm. over the last couple of years but it's amazing the listening that's going on on mobile devices. You know, if, you're, if your phone is, the microphone's turned on you're, and you're allowing apps to know mm. your location, all of a sudden you might start to notice that you're getting little ads coming up at you on different websites that might relate to a conversation that you were having with your partner a week ago and you think, that's weird, how's that happening? <laughs> so, so you know, there's a there's a besides Facebook, there's an awful lot of data being collected that is starting to uh, the people are wondering how on earth did I expose Actually, myself about, like about data. So obviously, world tourism day to day there's a big event held in Budapest, or how do you pronounce that in English, Budapest? Yeah, yeah. Um, and there is a big um, probably I think an hour session you can watch live. Um, from someone quite high up in the travel department of Google on big data and how it's being used for travel. Um, so they talk about big data is how they aggregate all this segmented data, I guess, that they, they get through all the different systems. And that's probably, that's good you mentioned that, because I think that's probably, of, of the big trends, I'd say the use of data for decision making would be the other massive trend in digital transformation. So everyone listening here would be 
because you are savvy businesses who are interested in in business improvement and and, and digital um, you'd be aware that you're starting to to more so use data to um, make business decisions than you have ever before. So you're using your sales data. You're no doubt many of you are doing dynamic pricing. You're going, oh well, I've only got a couple of those products left for that, that date. Oh, I could probably inch that price up a little bit, or I might pull some of that back off the OTA and you know sell that directly through a package or whatever so that dynamic pricing really using that sales data and that's that's probably one of the simp most simplest examples the other one the most ex accessible and simple example is Google Analytics powerhouse of information when understood what's in there and when set up properly and um, that this is, you know, Fabi's real area of expertise. And, you know, you don't live and breathe it. Like, you know, there's some specialists out there who they spend their whole life in Google Analytics, helping businesses understand their customer better and where they're coming from and what they're interested in and what they're And how they're booking, is. you know, what's, what's actually the simple thing about data that you could look at. And I'll tell you what, there's probably about 98% of the businesses that we work with that don't do it, right? So there's a huge area for improvement is look at the people who come to your website and then turn on e-commerce tracking so you can see actually who books and who has sent you as in, is it a referral? Is it your tourism organization? Is it a media release that you did? Is it an email that you sent? Is it a live chat on your website? Is it a Facebook post? You can get all that information of which the source of your bookings online on your website. And I can tell you for us, it's 70% of the bookings of people who sign up for our online training uh, days like this, it's via email. Massive email marketing. So if it's, a, it's still a huge untapped market, um, but your email marketing database must be segmented. So to give you an idea, you could segment it by region. So if you're on the Gold Coast, um, oh, let, let's think about Agnes Water because it's a bit more logical. So you know that a lot of people come to Agnes Water from 400 k around here, but there is also people coming from Melbourne and Sydney. Um, so if you look at the flights and you see that Jetstar's got sales on from Melbourne and Sydney at this very specific type of the year and you've segmented your database just into two regions within 400 k's or outside Melbourne or Sydney, um, you could email the people from Sydney or Melbourne when, well, Jetstar's probably not the best one, but uh, when Qantas or Virgin have got sales on. How simple would that be? And someone like me, if I lived in Sydney and Melbourne and I got an email with the picture of the beach and the nice warm weather and no one on the beach, I'll just book. You've made it so easy for me to come and have that holiday. Whereas if you, yeah. I was just going to say, and that, that at the heart of it, they already know you. They know your business. They trust you. So You're just providing you that extra bit, piece of customer service. Yeah, that's it. You've introduced them to those flight specials. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be something really complicated or expensive. And I'm telling you, that, telling you this because I see how it's not being done. And it's such a simple way because you probably can collect all the data in your reservation system, but perhaps that doesn't talk to your email marketing system. Hmm. And that's probably another key thing, Fabi. Um, it's good this conversation keeps leading me on to the next thing, is integration. It's about the connectivity between your different platforms. And Karen, you made a comment about that, talking about social media, I think, um, is the connectivity between the platforms. Like if you've got your e-commerce tracking enabled on Google Analytics because your reservation system can be um, can talk to Google Analytics and then you can turn on e-commerce tracking and then if you can, you know, have your sales client data being automatically updated to your client database, which is talking to MailChimp or whatever CRM you're using or email marketing system you're using, 
um, then you've got the whole lot flowing together. So and a, hang on, this is a great segue. It's like we've cracked, we've rehearsed that, but we haven't. So if your yeah. systems don't talk to each other, right? Remember that law Zapier I mentioned, Z-A-P-I-E-R, Zapier? So your system might talk to Zapier and Zapier might be talking to MailChimp. So this is what it is all about with cloud computing. Um, so for example, when you sign up for one of our webinars, um, I've got lots of different systems running. I've got our WordPress website. The webinar form is using Gravity Form on WordPress, um, but we use an email CR, um, CRM called Insightly, which is our customer relationship management system. And we also use MailChimp. I can tell you they don't all integrate with one another, but I made them integrate with Zapier. So as soon as you sign up for our live training ones, for example, the Google My Business one that's coming up in October, you will receive an email confirming all the dates, but you will automatically receive three emails about um, the registrations to the Zoom webinars for the three different sessions. Imagine if I had to go and manually enter every single person, we're sitting up at 42 at the moment, that's have registered for the Google My Business. If I had to manually enter them three times in our Zoom platform, it wouldn't be a worthwhile exercise, you know. So I've just managed to educate myself, thinking there's, there's got to be a better solution, found Zapier, and I've automated everything. So it allows us to give that service at a cost that is very reasonable because we don't have to pay for human resource for staff time to do that manual labor that would just get very boring so have a look around at zapier and at if this then that which is the other one that i've listed up there um and you'll you well will go wow you know i can from from our crm i create can create an invoice in zero is it's magic. I mean, I've, I've always been interested in technology. I can understand that people may not get excited about automation, but I'll tell you what, if it creates more time for yourself or to do things you love, you might get excited about it. So when you think about social media, I don't know how many of you are using any um, social media um, pre-scheduling tools. Is anyone using Hootsuite? Um, we have some people who help us with our social media on our team, Hannah and, and Claire. And so what we do is we have a Google Sheet where they have a, a social media calendar that they um, events that we're running into and then plan out roughly the posts that they're going to do. So um, it's, a, it's a rough guide and then, you know, they can afford to be a little bit more spontaneous than that as well, depending on what's going on. And then what um, Hannah uses is Hootsuite to be able to um, pre-schedule. And you can do that now in Instagram and Facebook. So Instagram opened up their application interface, their API to be able to talk to these programs. And we wouldn't but that certainly um, makes this workable for us. If she had to, it, uh, it would be pretty difficult to do. Um, so Karen says, uh, Hootsuite, I'm struggling with it, need to spend more time in this space. Yeah, yeah. So that's something we'll be able to focus on with you, Karen, is to just help you. There's not, you can't do absolutely everything in it. Some of the, some of the tagging's a bit limited, but it certainly should, it should be being used in a way that actually saves you time and, and helps you to implement a, a more planned approach, which is what you need in social media to get that rhythm going, to get that, get that routine. Happening. And once you, once you get started with automation, the thing that you don't want to forget is documenting. Because there'll be automation going left, right and centre. Claire was laughing with me the other day, Claire, who works with us. She said, if Fabi dies, there's, she's still going to be sending emails <laughs> because there's all these automations that go That's out. Right. And it's true. But you really need to document what you've, what you've set up 
in in different systems like playing you know writing in a book or writing in Evernote or in Word wherever you want uh, but to start writing the automation that are happening because there will be a time you don't have to be dead for that there'll be a time that you will see things posting and you're like oh my goodness where was it that I set that up and what was the login for it so make some notes when you get excited I know it's not the time to write notes but please do it otherwise Yes, you'll think about me when that happens. Um, don't forget, fire off any questions or topics you'd like to discuss. Just let us know. Um, but you've made me think about people, Fabi, in this conversation. And I like to talk a little bit about people and culture when it comes to digital transformation. Um, digital transformation for me only happens if there is the right culture in place in a business and even if that's a small business it's about the owners and you know the, the few staff that you've got working with you um, but innovation is like the bedrock um, and then digital transformation is one of the things that you're doing when you've got an innovative culture so like I said at the beginning for me innovation is a really hackneyed term now like it's it's just thrown around all the time and what what does it really mean when it's implemented? And for me, innovation is a cultural thing in an organisation that people are open to having the status quo challenged. Mm -hmm. So when, and certainly, you know, Fabian and I run our little business that way, no day kind of feels the same and we're always, and we've got to do that. We've got, we've got to sort of stay on top of things with what we do. But even when I was at the Australian Tourism Data Warehouse and we had quite a big team of developers, but it was right through the whole team, we really nurtured an innovative culture. So we, that meant getting the board on side with us. So the government stakeholders of that, that company needed to license us, agree that it was worth investing some time and money into continual improvement in the business. And then we had to run that culture right through everybody. So right through to the receptionist was entitled to um, challenge the processes. We welcomed anybody saying, um, uh, I, I think we could find a better way of doing this or do you really think we still need to do this or how can we improve things? So it was very much a, um, uh, a cha you know, open to challenge. And the other thing was about process and that we had the processes to allow people to bring ideas to the, to the management team and to um, get them approved for development and testing. And they may not have been tech ideas, they might have been more about changes to staff improvement or communications. And that, that was about, about a 25 person team um, and it thrived and it had a fantastic culture in just the happiness sense, like everyone was pretty happy and happy to come to work because they felt like they were able to make influence decisions that were going on. So for me, that innovation culture, that attitude and desire for continual learning and challenging what's going on are absolutely fundamental for successful digital transformation. Liz, you froze Just, for a second there. Oh, did I? Yeah. Did you get the words though? Yes. Because it was a bit of a sermon, so I don't think I want to do it again. <laughs> And, and it's so true. Um, and in so many organisations that would hear people working, you know, they're not fostering this culture of digital throughout. Um, I guess when I was travelling around Australia, you know, I was lucky enough to work with a certain brand of caravan parks and upskilling their staff. And I was saying, it was a few years ago now, and I was saying, you know, are you working with the cleaners that are out and about all the time, talking to customers? Are you empowering them to let them know about, um, about you know, the hashtag or where they can leave a review or a great place to photo photograph a koala or the best swimming hole to go to? Oh, no, we haven't thought about that. They're just cleaners. And I'm like, but you are at your reception all the time. And in your caravan park, the staff, the maintenance and the cleaners, they're the ones that are on the, on the ground. Um, so 
they suddenly started bringing some cleaners in the meetings and in training sessions. And the cleaners like, oh, yeah, I'll do Instagram. I'll do Facebook. You know, I can, I can help. I've got a little helper that's um, decided to come in. Well, me. this is innovation, Fab. You've got to be open. Short time to call you today, Yeah. Um, Karen has saying, got the word. I'm feeling energised listening to you both. I've been sticking my head in the sand a bit this year. <laughs> Cheers to innovation and tourism. Absolutely. I'm not drinking straight vodka, by the way. That's water. But we have to constantly force ourselves. And even though I'm the little nerd sometimes, I don't like being called a nerd, you know, I'm just going to keep forcing myself to, to look at our processes and improve because there is so much to do. There's so much information. I still remember when I was a kid, you know, we got the mail twice a day in the, po in, in the mailbox in Switzerland. Now there's like emails coming left, right and centre, having to multitask. We all owe it to ourselves to, to, to organise our working life um, with all these tools that exist. Mm -hmm. To be able to mm -hmm. basically do what we love, which is servicing our customers. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want to do, go to is responding to, to you know, five reviews at night because you haven't empowered your staff and trained them with a template to help you start preparing, prepare those responses. Absolutely. Has anyone experienced any interesting um, digital tools for, you know, in, in, in working with a business? Like in, in you as a customer have... Have we lost Liz? Oh. Is it just me or... Can you put your hand up and tell me if you can hear Liz? Right. Mark, can you hear her? Oh, all right. She she is just reconnecting. There we are. Hi. Poor old Optus on my phone is having a coronary. Um, I was just wanted to know if anyone's had any good experiences with digital tools as a customer, particularly as a traveller. Has there been any great tour you've been on where the digitisation of content was really good that springs to mind? For me, and it was a long time ago now, so there's you know, a lot of examples of it now, but I think it's the first time I ever saw a digitised content tour and it was really engaging was Alcatraz. When I was in San Francisco with the kids and they, you know, the headsets and the device they give you, I think it's on headsets actually, and you were listening to the storytelling in the content was compelling and it was all controlled by you to the stop and start. And you, as you were walking through the old prison, you were listening to real guards who had worked there and real prisoners who had been there who were telling the stories of what it was like. So you were transported back there. So you had this combination of incredibly real storytelling from real people and then that technology. So you did not need a tour guide. You wouldn't have wanted one because it was a really personal experience. Like I had the three kids there with me who were teenagers at the time. I didn't have a clue where they were. I was so engaged, just me and my headset walking through these cells. It's just amazing. Has anyone else got any um, any examples of that? Or oh, any anything that you may be thinking about doing and you don't quite know how to go about it? You know, maybe the power of people can help. If you're an accommodation provider, what are you doing pre guest arrival to get people excited about coming? Um, to make have, their check-in easier. I have this great story to tell. And in all my travels, I've only experienced this once. And I don't know if it's because I was judging the Tourism Awards at the time, but it was done the old-fashioned way, no automation, just an email prior to me arriving the day before, looking, you know, telling us it was a romantic, well, I was nine months old at the time, but... 
it was a romantic getaway place and they sent me an email they must have had a template with a list of where to buy the supplies on the way that where to get the best milk where to get the best cheese where to stop on the way where to get the best bacon for my morning or most beautiful local fruit and vegetables and i still remember and talk about it and all that you could do it you could simply automate it on day minus one of arrival send that template to the guest um, they will just be so excited that you've given them a warm welcome with all these great tips prior to them arriving and it's so simple to do so think about your post stay email but it's actually a pre-stay email that you can mm -hmm. automate mm -hmm. obviously that one i got wasn't automated but it's just fabulous because mm -hmm. you know how excited you are about going on a holiday even if it's one, one night and someone bothers to tell you where to actually start the holiday and make it better and better all the way to arrive it mm. um i i know it's not necessarily digital but it's using a digital device i like getting a text message in advance of staying at an accommodation place i really like that more and more people are doing that now and you know hi liz we're looking forward to you arriving tomorrow just checking what time you'll be coming da, 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 da. i feel like and particularly if it's signed off by you know Karen and Michael, for example, I really, I feel like I'm being welcomed into their place. And then typically what I've found is if that relationship building is there and that communication, it usually translates then into really hospitable service, really mm -hmm. friendly service when I get there. I really like that. Liz, I think we're going to have to wrap this up because you've got some way to be shortly, don't you? Oh, I forgot, yeah. I've got to talk about this again on a panel soon as well. Has anyone got any, I don't know, we, you know, we don't have all the answers, but has anyone got anything in particular they wanted to um, ask or comment on? Oh, maybe someone wants to comment on this great invention. Oh, that's an amazing invention, that thing, that wine cooler from Switzerland. Look, it's like, how do you call it? A wine cooler. It's like a beer. What's the one you call them for the beer? A stubby, a stubby cooler. cooler, but for wine. Who would have thought? In the freezer as well. Yeah, you put it in the freezer. I haven't seen it yet. Mm. But um, I should have bought 150. Yeah. And brought them back. I think they should be branded tourism travel. Yeah, what do you think? Who's, who's going to, how on. much do you think we could sell them for? <laughs> That's it. That's it all right well hopefully you've all had a good world tourism day and you're thinking about how to improve your processes for your customers inside your business things that sometimes they're just small things sometimes they're they're big investments and, and um, we've got people commenting also on facebook oh, i had an issue it wasn't streaming live right away but we've got Catherine heading got Angie from Agnes Water down the road. Even my husband has joined. Um, and great comments as well on the thread. So go have a look. I think everyone loved the wine cooler. <laughs> now, I've, now I've suggested it. Everyone's going to want one. <laughs> we'll create we'll some sort to, of automation we'll, drop shipping. I think we, what we need to do, Fab, is come up with an even better design. You're Swiss. You can beat the Swiss at their own game. <laughs> I don't think it exists. That. I'm quite happy with that one. <laughs> but oh, thanks very much for joining. Um, the next step, if you feel like it, so you can actually watch all the events of World Tourism Day 2018, hashtag, in Budapest, um, on their very own page. If you Google World Tourism Day, you'll find the World uh, UNWTO, which is World Tourism Organization, and their live stream. So... Thank you for joining us. Continue the celebrations. Learn more about digitalisation or just enjoy your evening. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you.